Hey everybody, this is Joshua James with KeepTurning.com. I'm um, doing a little uh, demonstration here using uh, pressure-sensitive calligraphy brushes in uh, Adobe Illustrator uh, using the paint brush tool. Uh, so I'm going to open this up here and I created a file that has uh, varying sizes of one uh, calligraphy brush with uh, pressure sensitivity on. Um, I, I like using various versions or sizes so that it's real easy to when I'm inking this stuff to just jump around and not have to keep adjusting the point size. Um, so let's uh, open one up. We go to our paintbrush uh, definitions at the top. Uh, let's just open uh, 15 point and it's a pretty simple brush. Uh, this one here is set on a 15 degree angle. We squashed it by about 20 percent so that even when you're not, you know, adjusting the pressure as you're drawing on the curves, you're still getting some thick and thin going on. And this one's set to 15 point with a 15 point variation. So we can go all the way to 15 point, all the way down to zero, uh, try to get some decent points at the end of our lines. Uh, Illustrator still is not the greatest at this. Uh, Adobe would be really wise to go in and create some endpoint uh, definitions and other choice on there where you could say, okay, no matter w how I'm pulling this line, thick and thin as I, I put it down, that as I pull up and release, it's always going to pull it to a zero, a zero point at the end of the line. That's, that's how I want it to end every time. Uh, be a great feature. So if you're listening, guys, add that because I would love it. Um, but currently that's not an option, and sometimes you get – Especially laying down a line is not so bad, but pulling the line at the end, uh, you'll end up with stubby ends on your lines. So I use this mainly for doing children's book art, illustrations, uh, stuff where I don't have to end with super clean points at the end like I would if I was doing, say, like comic book illustration where I might want some really fine points. Uh, if I am doing that, then I go to my pencil tool and set up uh, my line profiles ahead of time so that <clears throat> it works that way. But let's keep our fingers crossed the way they keep updating that that's coming down the line. Anyway, so let's close this. And I, I'll provide this uh, this file here. I'm going to have a link to it. I have it on a Dropbox folder. So you can download it and use these or just make your own. They're pretty easy to use uh, once you know you know where everything is to click on. So... Let's switch over to, a, we got a sketch here that was a thumbnail sketch in Photoshop that was just placed in here. And right off the bat, I, I know a lot of people like the blob tool. And, and basically because it does exactly what I'm going to show uh, the paintbrush tool does, but without having to set anything up. It's, as soon as you click on it, uh, it, it does, let's see here, let's zoom in. And we got the we got the blob tool, and if we do a line, oh, <laughs> helps if the line is black so we can see it. Uh, we can get a a thin line to a thick line. Pretty much what you would expect when you're drawing in uh, um, Photoshop using pressure tools or manga or something like that. Uh, so. It works, but the problem I have with it is the editability. You're pretty limited when you use the blob tool. As soon as you drop these lines, let's zoom in here, and I select it. You see that the blob tool is a shape. You, you plop this down and drop it, and that's what it is. Now, on the other side, if we switch over back, we click on this, we go back to our paintbrush tool, or just hit B on the keyboard, uh, we can... If we have them in here, let's let me copy these real quick because I don't have them in the file. If you're putting these, you want to put these brushes into your file. Just uh, do a um, Command A, select all, and then uh, Command C, copy. Go back to your file and Command V, paste them into your file, and then just erase them. Now, when you go up to your uh, brush uh, definitions at the top, they're now in there. And let's. Let's say I want, uh, let, let's go with the five point. Five point brush tool. 
and we got a black. You want it on the line because uh, the unlike the blob tool, the paintbrush tool, you can set it if you have your preferences set right in there. You can set it so that you can have the choice of the line and the fill color active. So if you want it to be a green line as you're drawing with a yellow fill, it will work just like the pencil tool or the pen tool does, uh, except that you'll have the option of doing uh, thick and thin lines as you're laying this stuff down. Uh, so we're going to just go with a black outline for right now. We're on our brush tool, and same deal. We can go thin to thick. And if we wanted to get that thick, we'd actually have to switch to a bigger brush. So let's say like the 18 point. And you can go pretty thin to thick lines. And looks very similar, functions the same way. The difference is, let's clean this up so we can see. Uh, the difference is, is that when I lay a line down like this with the pencil or with the uh, paintbrush tool and we select it, it's just a path where the blob tool is a shape. So the cool part with this is, is now I can edit the crap out of it. So if I lay that down and then I go, oh, you know what, that, that's not thick enough, it's not what I want. Instead of having to redo it like you would with the blob tool or add a outline to the shape and try to thicken it up, uh, you can just go in and say, all right, I'm gonna switch it to a 15 point and it's gonna pump it up or 12. Or you can leave it on a five and you can just go to your points and uh, line your line thickness and just up it. So you can adjust it however you need, bring it down to whatever you need. And you can adjust it easily. Let's throw this garbage out, move this over so you can see the difference. Uh, if we come in, we can say, all right, I need, I need this to be a little wider. It never loses the thick and thin to the line. It knows where it is along it and it just adjusts for it. Unlike when you're using the blob tool where if you need to adjust it you're working with a shape so now you're having to move stuff. Same thing with corners. I get this corner I can adjust the inside. I needed it rounder but and now this is all wonky from me shifting it and everything. I can't get it. Now if I'm using the uh, the brush tool and I come up and I get a line and you see what happens this has got the fill is on right now so we're gonna turn that off but if I get that and I'm like ooh, you know that's that's a little rough I can either come in and I can adjust individual things or I could actually just come in and say okay I'm gonna take out these points and now I'm going to oops now I'm gonna just adjust there it because it's it's just a uh, it's just a line it's actually what you it does what you expect it to instead of being a shape so I'm not putting the blob tool down if you love the blob tool stick with it that's fine uh, this just gives you a lot more versatility that you're not going to get with the blob tool and if you need it to end and be a shape it, just like any line in Illustrator if I go to objects and I have it selected and I say expand appearance now it's a shape. It's it's literally what the blob tool does right off the bat, except it's an extra step. Um, so if you've been using the blob tool, give the paintbrush tool a shot with these settings. And I think you'll really like it because it works exactly the same with so many more features to it. And if you put this down and then you decide, you know what, I don't want it to be a thick and thin solid line here. I want it to be... Um, I want it to be uh, artistic brush or something like that, right? So I want it to be something like this. You can click on that and change it where you can't do that with the blob tool. If you do, you're going to get it as an outline around the edges. True, if that's what you want, that's great. But at the same time, you can still do that with the, uh, the paintbrush tool. You just have to do that step of expanding the appearance and then put the outline on it so don't don't put yourself in a corner if you don't have to uh, definitely leave your options open because everybody has had the client that waits till the end and changes everything on you and this will give you the ability to make those changes this won't um so anyways let's let's go back and just show a little bit of how this stuff works uh let's go to our let's close that out
and go to our paintbrush tool. And if we came in and we're on, you're on the, uh, let's turn this off. We need it to go back to a five point. Yeah, let's do five point. Um, you can just come in and you know, draw things however you want. And if it's really cartoony stuff that you're doing where it doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter, like you want it to be really round and stuff, um, then this works really well. You can adjust your fidelity so you need it smoother or you need some real, you know, really jagged line, then that'll give you that option. Um, but it it's great for working these images out. Like, you can just come in, you know, do your drawing however you want to do it. And, uh, you know, and just like anything in Illustrator, easy to make adjustments. Also, with another thing with that, that effect with the uh, brush tool or the paintbrush tool is that say you were doing, I don't know, like hair or something, right? And you did that. And you're like, ugh. With the blob tool, it's kind of a nightmare. Um with this tool, not so much because you can just go in and make quick adjustments to it and fix whatever's going on. Um, so that's something to keep in mind too. So if I was going through here, I normally I don't work in black and white and then go to color. I just work directly in color as I go. So to give you an idea of you know how this would turn out, and you've probably seen the picture already, is we'll pull up the actual file. And so this is the finished piece from that sketch. And I just go in with the colors I'm picturing for, and I do adjust as I go. Um, but let's pull up, uh, let's just make it the pig so we can look at that. So here's, you know, here's the, the pig basically of how it's made up. And if there's anything in here that I saw something that wasn't working, we can come in and tweak it. Um, and like any Illustrator file, uh, there's, you know, we can do whatever we want with it. So that's pretty much the breakdown for those uh, paintbrush tool in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, if you guys have any questions, um, actually one thing I just thought of it is that if you're working with the blob tool or the paintbrush tool in Adobe Illustrator, we're, I found it best to work oversized. I usually go at least double the size of my final file is supposed to be. Um, so this, I think, was, you know, 8.5 by 11 or 8.375 8 by 10.875 or something. Uh, but I work, I actually did the files at, actually, this is the actual file, so let's see what it is. At quite a bit bigger, uh, almost double. So 200%. And the main reason for this is, is that if you work two sides and it's small, the paintbrush tool and the blob tool have the habit of doing these wonky corners when you're working with detailed stuff and small. It probably won't do it for me now because I want it to. Ah, there it goes. You'll get this weird stuff going on. And uh, what it is... I think it's putting too many points in for a small corner and it makes the brush go crazy because if you go in with your pen tool and you knock those points out and then you just clean up the curve, it'll be fine. But to avoid having to do that <laughs> a lot, especially if you're working with something that has a lot of little detail stuff in it, it's easier just to work really big and then import the file into, say, InDesign for your production and reduce it to the scale you need it or just duplicate the file and in Adobe Illustrator, expand it, uh, the artwork, so that the lines are all shapes like you would get with the blob tool, and then shrink it down to scale to the uh, size you need for the final product. Because even if you do it bigger 
and you reduce it without expanding in Illustrator, those wonky corners will start showing up for some reason. Um, hopefully they fix that in the future, but it's just one little issue that pops up. And I've talked to a lot of other people uh, that have run into this to similar problems with it, and they have their own fixes, how they work with it too. But that's mine. Um, that's pretty much it. So if you guys got any questions, uh, shoot me a line or... I guess drop me a line, shoot me a message. <laughs> Help, don't shoot me, just talk to me. And uh, we'll uh, hopefully have some more cool stuff coming out for you down the road. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.